What's up y'all, it's the Doctor Investor back again with another video. Do you have Section 8 tenants applying to be in your rental property? And are you wondering what red flags to look out for when screening these tenants? This is the perfect video for you. You won't want to miss out. So today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 red flags to look out for when screening Section 8 tenants. When you're dealing with Section 8 tenants, you're dealing with a different applicant pool than you're dealing with with market rate tenants. In order to get a Section 8 voucher, you're typically disabled, a single parent with multiple kids, or make under a certain number of income. When you're dealing with individuals who fall into these categories, you should not screen them the same way you screen market rate tenants. You need to be more diligent because if you get a bad Section 8 tenant within your rental property, it can be an absolute headache. So let me get into the top five red flags to look out for. The number one red flag is if their prior landlords or current employers have nothing but bad things to say about them. I know there's always two sides to the story, but typically landlords are forthcoming to other landlords about their experience with a specific tenant. If a landlord is saying this tenant is a bad tenant, they cause headaches, they have people living in the property now in their vouchers, these people are causing ruckus, these individuals do a very poor job of maintaining the property, this will tell you not to potentially rent to these individuals because they're going to cause you the same exact headaches that they were causing their prior landlord. So make sure you are talking to their prior landlords when screening these Section 8 tenants because they will give you a lot of insight. Another red flag to look out for when screening Section 8 tenants are individuals lying about the amount of people that will be living within the property. Section 8 tenants typically are single mothers or single fathers in rare situations with multiple children. And the, some primary voucher holders will have people not on their voucher living within the property. One way to kind of suss this out is to talk to the current landlord. They typically know who's going in and out of the property because they're usually coming to check on their property at least once every six months and they're able to tell you if multiple people that are not on that voucher are living within the property. The most common thing I see of individuals that should not be living in the property that actually do are the father of the children. So if a voucher holder has multiple children that are about a year or two apart with the same last name and they're under the age of five, I can almost guarantee you the baby father is nearby and will be living in the property. So it's important to ask that tenant, are there gonna be people living in this house that are not on that voucher? Because Section 8 does not do background checks on those individuals. They only do background checks on the individuals on that voucher. So make sure you are very firm with that tenant and making sure they understand that individuals not on this voucher cannot live in this property. Another red flag to look out for when you're dealing with Section 8 tenants is looking at their criminal background history. With any tenant, you should be doing these background and credit checks, but especially with Section 8 tenants, because unfortunately, they're more likely to have a criminal background history. So if they have anything alarming, such as domestic abuse, theft, or grand theft auto, you wanna make sure you're doing your due diligence when it comes to selecting prospective tenants because you don't want an individual in your house causing a lot of problems. So make sure you're doing those criminal background checks when you're thinking about selecting Section 8 tenants because you do not want someone within your property with an alarming criminal background history. Another red flag you should look into when screening Section 8 tenants is their payment history. That's something I like to see when I pull their credit report. Most Section 8 tenants will not have great credit, but I like to see what their payment history is. Are they continuously missing payments to their 
and creditors or are they making their payments on time? Another thing that I mentioned earlier is making sure you talk to the prior landlord. Are they paying their payment on time every month? Because with Section 8, there's typically a portion that the government pays, which is pretty much a substantial portion of the rent, but there's still a portion that the tenant has to pay. So make sure you ask them, their prior landlords, were they making these payments on time every month? The last red flag I'm going to get into when screening Section 8 tenant is make sure you check their eviction history. Evictions are public record and when you're doing your screening it's important you check if this individual has been evicted in any of the 50 states in the US. Evictions are a long and tough process and are an expensive process for a landlord. So typically they're not going to go through with an eviction unless the tenant is causing a lot of distress. Some of this distress includes not paying the rent on time multiple times, causing a lot of damage to the property. These are some of the many reasons that landlords will evict the tenant. So if a tenant has an eviction on their history, I typically will not take them as a tenant. So it's important you screen to see if they have evictions on their history. So that's a wrap for the top five red flags to look out for when screening Section 8 tenants. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you know anybody that will benefit from my content, make sure you are sharing it with them. The Dr. Investor is out.